Hello and welcome to Called Think Sports. Um, this week was a really interesting one for the Utah Jazz and we're going to get into it. But first things first, Dale and I are going to be doing a giveaway associated with this video um, that is contingent on the said item still being available by the time we hit that mark. But if we get 72 likes um, in honor of Joe's number seven with the Australian national team and Joe's number two with the Utah Jazz, we will give away a Utah Jazz, uh, a, a Joe Ingalls jersey if they are still available. Um, we're going to get talk about it, how he might not be a member of the Utah Jazz come Friday, uh, come Thursday. But please um, leave a like and then comment your jersey size in the comment section and we will pull from the comment section. So if you leave a like and comment and we get up to 72, um, you have a chance of winning a Joe Ingles jersey just in memory of him. I, I definitely know that I bought one yesterday because... <laughs> Um, I'm concerned about whether or not he's going to be a jazz man. We um, all know that he tore his ACL um, earlier this week and just um, just looked really nasty from what I've heard. Um, I haven't decided to subject myself to that torture, but he's making $13 million and right now um, this year, about thereabouts, and that's not going to really help the jazz. It's only going to um, cost them a lot of money with the luxury tax. So I, I'm pretty confident he's going to get traded. I, I don't know what you think, Dale, about um, where Joe might end up or if he's just going to end up staying a jazz man for the next little bit or what, what your thoughts are. Well, if the only benefit for the jazz to keep him is if they want to like have the guaranteed, not like the almost guaranteed to resign him if they keep him. Yeah. The problem yeah, with the that is the, right, the bird rights. They'll have to pay him more. Um, and uh, like I don't know. Like I love Joe Ingles. I don't know how much he's worth right now. Uh, it might be worth just looking to mix it up. So I I think more than likely, as long as the Jazz can find a team who's just looking to take on salary just for this year, the Thunder, which is literally <laughs> the only team I can think of who's in that position. But um, that's probably what's going to happen. Is the Jazz are going to talk to the Thunder, see if they can work something out, and it's I think. Whether he gets traded, it's not dependent on the Jazz. It's dependent on another team saying yes, is what it comes down to. You know, uh, how many draft picks are the uh, are the Thunder going to get this week? How, how many people <laughs> are going to... How many more draft picks do the Oklahoma City Thunder get? Are they going to get any more first rounds? Are they going to continue to just absolutely dominate the NBA in the draft and continue to absolutely um, have no chance at winning a title? But yeah, I, I agree with you, like... Maybe the Jazz could somehow package him and send him somewhere for a player if there's a team that really just wants to rebuild, wants some picks, and wants Joe since he's an expiring contract. Like, I could see that happening. But from my understanding, the Oklahoma City Thunder literally need to take on capital right now. Like, I think they don't have enough uh, don't have enough money on the books. And apparently there's also a floor to the salary cap. Who knew? Um, <laughs> no. Never seen a team have that problem before. Maybe, maybe it's more common than I think. But yeah, um, I think very likely this Thursday we might just see Joe and maybe Elijah Hughes getting shipped off to the Oklahoma City Thunder to get the Jazz either just barely over the cap or to try to get under the cap and um, send send a pick there, maybe remove some restrictions um, and try to not be a repeat offender since the Jazz um, and people talk about, well, Ryan Smith needs to be willing to spend money. And he does, like, right? And he'll have to pay some luxury tax. But if the Jazz become a repeat offender, um, I don't think anyone can really consciously say, like, Ryan Smith should pay the repeat offender tax. That is... That's ridiculous, a, yeah. It's a ridiculous expense. And it compounds on itself every year, right? So it's... And, and you saw the Trailblazers make a move simply to avoid the repeat offender tax. Uh, what, what was it, yesterday or two days yeah, ago? Yeah, yesterday. Um, with and it'll be interesting to see how that impacts the Clippers, right? Since it looks like Paul George isn't going to be back this year, um, it looks like if Paul George isn't back, Kawhi Leonard isn't going to be back. So, like, what are the Clippers really put, playing for? Um, obviously, we're not a Clippers podcast, so don't really know a lot about that. But that's um, those are some guys that like maybe the Jazz could have moved Joe to get um, Covington, and I can't remember the other player who uh, the Blazers Norman shipped Powell. off. Norman Powell. Um, I don't know if I liked the the fit of either of them, but obviously neither of them are available now. So just um, a couple more players the Jazz won't be able to move for this week. Yeah, and 
I I think it's probably unlikely that the Jazz get a piece back for Joe Ingles, unless we're unless the Jazz are looking to trade someone like Bogdanovich with them, and they're just, like they need Joe Ingles to make the salaries yeah. work. Which is, I don't know how many trade options are out there for something like that. I mean, there is the um, whole like if they're able to find somebody else with like a twelve to fifteen million dollar deal, like Joe has, who has three four years left on their contract that the team is just done with and doesn't want anymore that you can trade Joe there and tr- um, give them an expiring contract so they can have more money come free agency um, and take on someone who I don't know if you necessarily want as the jazz, but at least get someone who can play and who can um, kind of be in that bench role that Joe's in. I know last night you talked a bit about Trent Forrest um, and Pascal, um, Eric Pascal trying to pick up those minutes and, I love for I love Forrest. I think he could be a decent fit. But what the Jazz are losing with Joe, and I don't know if they can find, is someone who's six eight on the court. Like we know that the Jazz are really short. And yeah, Joe isn't an elite wing defender, but at least when he sticks his arms out, they go out a lot farther <laughs> than anyone else on the team. So I don't and Trent Forrest loses some um loses some height. I think he's six four. So replacing Joe is going to um be hard. And yeah, he's had a rough year this year. And who knows, maybe Joe just got old this year. You know, maybe he had a great year last year. He got old and that was it. But he also could have just been having a rough patch. So it just really stinks to see someone who's given their um, heart to the state, given their heart to the city um, and to the organization and who's just been so much fun to have. Like, I feel like, and maybe this is just because he's been there kind of as like, this is my coming of age jazz team or whatever you want to say. But I feel like there hasn't really been a Joe Ingles in the past on the Jazz. Like, he's just a beloved guy that just see, is somehow so relatable to everyone. And it's just been a, a pleasure to have in the state. And it is going to be disappointing and really sad if he gets traded. Um, If he gets yeah. traded, like. Yeah. And yeah. He, he is one of the glue guys on the roster. Like, you see a lot of great teams have players like a, a Jay Crowder or a Marcus Smart kind of player where um they – they are kind of hold up the team. The, 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 those glue guys, maybe they're not the best player on the team. Typically they're not, but they bring energy. Um, they're, they're, they stand their ground. They're not, they can talk back and forth with people. And like, <laughs> that's one thing that uh, we haven't had many players like that, that are kind of those glue guys on the jazz. And that's what Joe Ingles has been for a long time for the yeah. jazz. So. And that's probably a lot of the reason why he hasn't been traded. I know whenever there's been trade discussions, like, Joe is probably one of the names that always comes up, right? But um, he probably brings a lot more to the organization than even we as fans can really understand. And maybe it's sentimental, but it could also just be like, no, we know he brings this value as a teammate that we're not, we don't think we can replace in a trade and that he's probably really valuable to the locker room. Um, I know that he, it's, I believe he gave an interview um, yesterday or the day before with, I think Tim McMahon saying like, Hey, I know I might get traded. Um, and I'm not going to let that sour my time here. Like he's just a really good guy. And apparently he <laughs> talks a lot of trash talk on the court, you know, and says some things that we would all be shocked to hear. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I mean, the basketball court is a completely just different place that I don't even think any, anyone can truly understand unless maybe you've sat courtside um, or you've played in the league. So it's it's fun. Um, we, we can't really go into Joe Ingles for this entire podcast. And we are going to be getting here into kind of like a um, pre-All-Star break um, review of where the Jazz are at and where we think they're going and if we're concerned or not. But do you have anything else that you want to say about Joe? No, it, it, It's kind of weird because this feels like kind of an in memoriam thing but is this he's yeah. still around he's not dead he is we'll, we'll see him he, around he's not dead he's not dead <laughs> maybe he's not traded and maybe he's back on the jazz next year with a new contract um i would you know bet money but then again i would have bet money that the warriors were going to suck this year so <laughs> there's a reason that i don't bet money on things but yeah um i hope joe is able to stay with the team in some capacity um and that it's best for the team Like, obviously, I do want the Jazz to win, and I don't know if him being back on the roster next year, especially with um, how with his recovery and things like that is going to be best for the team. But I am definitely not wishing ill upon Joe. Like, it's been awesome to have him here. He's a great guy, and it 
was devastating Sunday night when I got that notification. Um, wasn't watching the game, and that was just really, really just sad to see that he's um, at least not with the Jazz in a playing capacity for the rest of the season. Yeah, it. We'll see what happens. Um, and, and like we said, even though we don't bet money. If we did, we probably wouldn't have a great track record. So we'll see yeah. what happens. Um, we will. We will. But l- l- let's talk about. Uh, we're a little bit past the halfway point, but the All Star break is always like a. I know the All Star break's not here yet. It's coming, and we'll just say pre pre trade deadline, which yeah, is you know a bit closer. Let's kind of re- review how the team has been, what we expect to see. Um, we got two All Stars. I don't think we mentioned that yet here, but oh, we hadn't. Way to go, Donovan and Rudy. Like, I think everyone and was expecting it, but that's just so amazing. Both, that Both yeah. very deserving. Rudy Gobert has had an, the, his start while he was, like, the start to the season has been one of the best that I've seen from him for a long time, as, like, especially offensively. I know it's not been dominant, but I've I've been really liking what I've been seeing from him on the offensive end. And Donovan Mitchell, I was hoping he was going, like, he's been playing great. I was hoping he was going to take a bigger step, but seeing him come back last night, he looked like a superstar. I saw an article that was written where it's like it was like video game. It, it looked like Donovan Mitchell was playing in a video game and just <laughs> controlled everything last night. So I'm excited Do to you see wanna, what he has for the rest of the season. So you're saying that you don't think um, Rudy Gobert's offensive year has been um, crazy, but do you want to know something? He will be the first player in NBA history if he finishes his averages like he does right now at to average 16 points per game and 70 plus points, um, f- um, 70 plus field goal uh, with a percent with a field goal percentage of 70 plus percent. And it doesn't even, even need to be 16 points. Like if he averages more than 15 points, he'll be the first player in NBA history to do that. So like maybe he's not an offensive powerhouse who the jazz are, you know, getting 30 points a night from or 20 plus, but what he does with the ball when he has the ball is incredibly efficient and historic. So it's... Well, <clears throat> and I, I don't want to dig into that too much, but think about how much of an impact that has. Where Because you have some scorers where they can score 30 a night, but they need 30 shots to get that. And that's 30 possessions of the game. Rudy Gobert comes in, and he only needs 10 shots to get his 16 points. Uh, yeah. On average, a little bit more than 10 shots to get his 16 points. But that's... He doesn't need much. He's extremely efficient. And even though it's not 30 points, he's not wasting very many possessions with missed shots. Yeah. And I mean, it's not even necess- like a lot of it's coming from the free throw line, right? He gets a decent amount of free throws per game. I don't have the average attempts per game, but he's averaging 69% from the line this year. Like that's an improvement that might mellow off a bit. But if he's able to get up into 70% from the line, that'll be just something really really good for the jazz like i believe Donovan league Andrews average is like a lot this year league average is like 74 75 it's normally right around there yeah so having rudy at 70 that's not that far off and he's one of the worst free th- free throw shooters at least worst free throw shooters on the team that gets to the line regularly so yeah that's that's a good floor to have and i mean obviously you do want a bit more um when it comes to points in the paint but if you think about it, at 70%, he's averaging 1.4 points every time he goes to the line. Like, if you average 1.4 points per possession, that's an offensive rating of, like, a ra- of 140. I mean... Dang. Like, it sucks let's to get, watch him miss free throws. <laughs> I mean, it sucks to watch him miss free throws, right? But an offensive rating of 140 is, like insane when you think about it and that's why getting to the line is so big like then you think about it if you get chris paul there at 90 plus percent from the line like that's an offensive rating of 180 like once you start realizing that that's why you realize oh people want to get to the line like the league average offensive rating is like around 110 so to be plus 70 points right now um in that regard is is crazy um and donovan like you said had an insane game last night I think he was six of seven from the field, uh, sorry, from three and came back with a vengeance and hopefully he's healthy and in shape and um, him being out gives him 
um, feeds that fire and maybe missing Joe also fuels the rest of the team. We'll hopefully have Rudy Gobert back against the Knicks on Monday and be able to hopefully go undefeated into the all-star break. Um, Warriors on Wednesday would be hard to do that against, but it's, it's been a rough month of January. Um, I, and it's not January anymore, but it was a rough month. I think is the best way to put it. Like in the end, maybe remove January from how you evaluate this season and see what happens, you know, from October to December and February to April. Yeah. And I, I think a lot of people I've, I've been seeing the national, a lot of people in like the national media or just people who cover the whole NBA have been down on the jazz because yeah. of this rough month. I don't think, and, and we've seen this most years when something happens with the jazz, people take it at face value and it feels like they rarely dig into what's actually going on. I don't think many people knew how, like how deep we have, we're having to go into our rotations just to get like an eight man rotation. Yeah. Um, so it, it's been rough. It's been understandably rough though. And I think they, they just had these last two games. We have, we have a building building block to go off of two wins against two playoff teams. And I think, I think the jazz are starting to turn it around. Donovan Mitchell's back. Assuming everyone comes back soon, stays healthy, the Jazz are likely going to get a top three spot in the West. I, I think they'll overtake the Grizzlies. Yeah, I'll be interested to see what happens there. Um, I was pulling up the standings. And Dale and I do both know, before the comment section goes crazy, um, we do understand how many players the Nuggets and Nets were missing. Yeah. We do get that. But we also know, like again, at least against the Nuggets, the Jazz were missing a lot of players. And even last night against the Nets, while we had Donovan back um, and were able to watch him play, like they were still missing Gobert and Clarkson. Um, and Ingles. And, and Ingles. <laughs> <laughs> and Ingles. Back, back to Ingles. But like we wouldn't really expect the um, any team in the league to be successful without their top two players. Like, right? And what's the current discussion around Jokic right now um, in, in Denver? Well, they don't have Jamal Murray and they don't have Porter Jr. So what's going to happen there? Nothing. Like, we we understand that when you're missing your top two guys, you're not going to win a lot of games. And while the Jazz have definitely lost some games that I wish they could have won over this stretch, and maybe they still should have won, um, I really just am going to judge them a lot more on the months of February, March, and April than this month, right? Like, if come mid if come in March, this is still a problem. Then yeah, I'm going to start ringing, um, you know, ringing the bell and be doom and gloom about it. But right now, like it sucks. It's sad to watch, but I'm not concerned about the month of January. Um, and there are some things you can take away. Like the jazz did lose to the warriors before everything happened um, on January 1st. And we'll get to see if the jazz are full strength this Wednesday, they'll have another crack at it. But it comes down to the fact that like all the chaos that happened in January um, does not really deserve to be taken into account when evaluating who the jazz are as a team. Yeah. I, I think that's how the team feels. I think that's how everyone should feel. And now once, once the jazz are healthy, let's judge them on that and, and see what happens. Um, and and yeah. so it's, it's kind of interesting. It's too like, two completely different sides of the season we've seen before the beginning of the year, the jazz were looking awesome. Um, they, they were sitting at the third spot, but were really fighting for their top two spot. And then we've just seen everything fall apart in January. Um, yeah. so I like, and we can blame a lot of that on players being out, but even with players coming back, we, we can see that the jazz, they kind of have two sides and they need to pick which team they're going to be, especially come playoff time. A lot of people are saying, yeah, but like I, I think a lot of people have it in their heads. The jazz are a first round exit or uh, a sweep in the second round. They think, yeah, they won't be an easy team to beat, but they'll play a better team and, and get beat out of the playoffs pretty early. I think that's kind of the vibe around the league and yeah. the jazz it's time. And I think, the Jazz have the right kind of roster that will come into the rest of the season and the playoffs with a little bit of a chip on their shoulder, trying to prove that we're not only a regular season team that they can, they can be great in the playoffs as well. I will say, I do think 
there's some bias there when it um when that's the discussion that really isn't analyzed to the level it should be. Like Chris Paul has shown no reason for us to believe that he can win a title throughout his career when it comes to like the history of him being terrible in the playoffs and not being able to get anything done. Right. But he's always talked about it as an elite player because he is right. Mm -hmm. Um, And maybe last year dissuaded some of those notions, maybe him being able to get to the finals um, like helped out. But I would say the first time they played a healthy team all last postseason against the bucks, they lost. Like, I don't think that Chris Paul has proven to me that, um, he should be that this that the Suns should just be like the number one team, you know. Like they're great, they're great this year. I don't want to take away anything from them in the um in the regular season right now. And I definitely know that I am saying what so many people were saying about the Jazz last um last season, right? But it is kind of funny. I feel like people have, for whatever reason, pigeonholed Utah into a team that can't make it in the playoffs. And yeah, they definitely have struggled there, but I. Don't I feel like Utah is a team that gets given that moniker that um other teams and other teams are given it and should be. And and maybe that's just because I only ever listen to I, I mainly hear things about the Utah Jazz when I listen to national media. Um I mainly go out and listen to what they're saying about the Jazz. And maybe that's my problem there. But I I think the only team that's proven themselves that you can actually say has proven themselves in the West is the Warriors. I don't think any other team you can really say has. And I wonder if the Last Dance documentary is kind of shaping some of that. <laughs> if it's still in the back of their head that uh, the the Stockton Malone Jazz couldn't couldn't get a couldn't chip, get over that hump. Yeah, no, that's that's an interesting thought. So, do you think the Jazz are going to get the three seed? That's your prediction. I, as as assuming health, I think the Jazz should easily get the three seed. Since right now, I think they've played one less game. Um, than they're, the Grizzlies and are three and a half back from the Grizzlies. They're three and a half back, so they'd be three back if they win another game. Um, I can't remember. The, is the tiebreaker for the Grizzlies still available? It um, it might be. I think. That's, I think right now the Grizzlies are up two one, and there's probably one more game that the Jazz could win. Um, they beat the Jazz there. Full yeah, the schedule. Grizzlies, I think it is 2-1. 2-1. And obviously the first game was close. Jazz should have won that. You can complain about the official sum, but they shouldn't have let the Grizzlies back into the game. Um, and the other win against the Grizzlies, the Jazz were really shorthanded, um, didn't have Donovan and Rudy, so really what can you expect? But it'll be, assuming they play the Jazz one more time, um, yeah, they do, April 5th. So that is the last Circle month of the that season. One. La- um, last week of the season, it looks like. So that could be a really big one. Um, I don't know when it comes to strength of schedule and things like that. Like, it looks like they still have one of their games against Detroit coming up. They still have an okay, a game, at least one game against OKC. Um, they are playing some teams down the stretch that could be fighting for playoff position. Like, they're going to be playing um, in the last couple of weeks, Indiana, Milwaukee, Golden State, Phoenix, Utah, Denver, Boston. Um, so it'll be interesting to see. I think the Jazz could do it. I would be more inclined to say that the Jazz are going to stick with the four seed. Um, but the Grizzlies have had a great year, and maybe they're due for um, running into some issues. I don't know if they've had their COVID incident this year, and maybe they, they won't they, have it. But the, the amazing thing is that they didn't have it as bad as the Jazz did. I don't think Yeah, uh, a lot of teams didn't, but um, they had it, uh, both injuries and COVID, and... They that was in the middle of their big winning streak and they kept winning, which was yeah. kind of amazing. And John without John Morant and they did insane. And John Morant, you know, was an all star for a reason. And I'm really interested to see if he can be the guy on a um team, mainly just because he can't hit threes. But maybe the league is gonna move back to the mid range here soon. So it's it's interesting. Um, I do think the Jazz will get home court. I think we're both in agreement on that. But there's gonna need to be a turnaround, right? Like. They um definitely have – they need to find some motivation, and I think Joe being out and Donovan and Rudy being gone for as long as they've been are going to be the motiv- – are going to be a springboard at least for a bit. And they need to manage to um, – they need to make that last for the next, you know, four or five months. Like it's 
And it, there's still a lot of the season left. Yeah, and I, honestly, I'm not looking for a huge winning streak. Looking at their schedule, it, it will be tough to put together a, a 9 plus, 10 plus game winning streak. I'm just looking for some consistency where the Jazz can put together three game winning streaks and and just keep doing and that. If, if they can win 75 percent teams, yeah, like that's that's a big one. But yeah, I, I they they definitely still have some potential, and all is not lost this year. I do think, especially with Joe being gone, my um playoff my championship hopes are a bit less than they've been. But what we will. We'll see what happens. That, that's Anything's all we can possible. do. Anything's possible. So thank you guys so much for watching. Um, reminder, we are doing the giveaway of a Joe jersey. Um, if we get up to if we get 72 likes. And also remember to comment your um shirt size in the description. We will be randomly choosing from the comment section um who wins if we hit that 72 likes mark. So thank you guys again for watching. Please subscribe um and go jazz.